In this video tutorial, we're actually going to step through the process of uh, showing how you can create your own custom LOD import group settings uh, for use uh, with a project or a team. Um, and I'll also explain a little bit about how the settings are working and which parameters you want to target. Let's get started. The first thing that I want to cover is just what an LOD is in general and why you would want to use them. So LOD stands for level of detail. Um, and in, in a traditional sense, why you would want to use an LOD is for performance optimization. Um, typically in game development, LODs are used all over the place. Something like ArcViz, you probably might not use those where you're not looking for absolute runtime performance. However, if your need is that you need you know, the maximum number of frames, you need the maximum performance, chances are you're probably gonna use LODs. So let's look real quick what's on screen and I'll, I'll kind of explain what's happening here. So in, in this LOD chain that we have, um, this is the same asset. However, it has um, these kind of cascading levels of detail. Now, LOD zero is kind of that model that you, you would normally create in your DCC program. That would be your highest fidelity model that you would want. Um, and where you use LODs is as the camera starts to get further and further away from the object, you want to reduce it down um, to the next LOD. So for example, if our camera is close to LOD zero and we start backing up, it's going to switch to LOD one, which is a lower res version of our LOD zero. And consequently, LOD two is a lower resolution than our LOD one and so on and so forth. Um, this comes in very, very handy um, and very critical, especially in game development where you're needing to keep your, um, your poly counts on screen and your draw counts as low as possible. So that's why you want to use LODs. Now in the traditional sense, you would create LODs uh, manually. So for example, you would spend most of your time modeling your LOD zero. Once it looks good, you go in and then you reduce it, reduce, 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 and you export those out as your LODs. Import them into your game engine and then compile them together to create your single asset. Um, however, um, Epic's made um, a lot of changes to the engine um, and it's been in there for a little bit um, when it comes to automatic LOD generation. Um, in fact, uh, anymore now, you don't even have to worry about creating your LODs. You just focus on your main asset, get all the details they'll import, and then it will automatically reduce it for you. Um, so that's the process that we're going to kind of step through in this video is to show you how you can control that automatic LOD generation um, through the tools that are built into Unreal. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and import um, this, uh, this rock example, which is the same one that we have, um, but we'll actually step through the process of how we set it all up, um, in particular from the LOD setting. So the, the thing that I want to be cognizant of right now is the static mesh LOD group. That's ultimately what we're going to start creating our own custom, um, but let's just kind of step through what comes out of the box when you, uh, when you install the engine. So we can see from here that I think by default it comes in at none, but we can choose um, some of these presets, level architecture, small prop, large prop, deco, vista, foliage, height, and high detail. Um, I will tell you that under the hood, these are very, very similar with the exception of a, a few small tweaks. Um, there's nothing to say that you couldn't, you know, say that you, you import this, what is a rock, as level architecture, and you think, you know, ah, oh, that's not what I want. Um, we can change that once it's already imported um, at any point in time, and it's, and it's not gonna have a huge detrimental effect. However, you probably do wanna set it after the start, um, but just know that all these categories that are here, uh, we can change at any point in time, and there's nothing that says that just because you import it as a small prop, you can't change it to a large prop. Uh, the underlying system uh, is the same for all of these. So in this case, I'm just gonna take it to, um, we'll just do deco. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave everything kind of as is. Um, I'm not gonna cover the rest of this stuff, but this is really all that we're, we're worried about. So I'll go ahead and import this. And there we go. So let's open the asset and, and see kind of uh, what's, what's happening here. So when we set our, our, our build settings in the LODs, um, it automatically generated these additional LODs for us. If we chose none, we would just get this LOD zero, which is if you remember from this image, is just our base asset, just the base visuals. Uh, but we, because we chose um, 
that that deco preset this is kind of what is happening here so i'll roll these up just so we can see um, so i'm going to start right here which is in our lod settings and this is lod group so the same one that we saw from that drop down appears here in our actual asset this is why i said we could change this at any point in time so underneath um deco what it it has some rules in it that state a couple things the first thing is is our number of lod's four so if we cycle through we can see lod one LOD2, LOD3, and of course our base, LOD0, makes up our four in total. So I'll switch this back to auto. Um, and we're not gonna worry about the other settings here um, just for the purpose of this. Uh, really what we wanna focus on are those, those settings that come in. So minimum, we've got four LODs and it's going to compute those. The next thing that it has is a set of rules for the reduction settings. Uh, what do we mean by that? So if we look at kind of the wireframe here, you can see that the, the poly count for each subsequent LOD is reduced by how much. Those are the reduction settings. So in the build settings here, um, and underneath our reduction settings, you can see for our base LOD, we're coming in at 100% triangles, right? No change to the mesh, it's exactly what we want. But if we switch to LOD one, which is our next one, you can see reduction settings are percent triangle 50%. So the reduction settings are stating that we're going to reduce our LOD1 50% of what our LOD0 uh, was. And we can see that, uh, maybe a little difficult to see, I'll see if I can rotate this here. Um, so let's look at our LOD0, we can see our triangle count is 1,228. And our LOD1 is 614, so pretty close. Not exact, um, and there's a reason for that, but it gets really, really close to what we want. And then if we look at our LOD2, you can see our percentage triangle is 25%. One thing I want to make note of as you're going through this and, and understanding the settings here is that the percent triangle is not based on the previous LOD, it's based off of your base LOD. So in this situation, our LOD2 is stating that I want 25% of my triangles from LOD0, which at 1200, uh, for our base LOD, if we go to LOD2 at 300, it's pretty close. Uh, and then finally, the last bit is our third LOD, which is reducing it down to 12.5% of um, our base uh, our, our base LOD triangle cap. So you can see that each time, very, very simple math is we're just reducing our poly count in half each time we go down. Um, and then lastly, I'll switch to this LOD one and kind of explain the other things here, which is our max deviation, pixel error, silhouette, texture shading, uh, welding, hard edge, recompute numbers, all this. So all these settings are stating is that each time that we reduce, um, what what is the level of importance that we want to place on those? So for example, you know our LOD zero and LOD one, uh, these are going to be the, probably the most prominent, most obvious LOD changes that you'll have um, while playing whatever your if it's a game, if it's a product, whatever it is, um, in runtime. That's going to be your most obvious one. So in our settings, you know, when, when you're going down to compute, the silhouette, texture, and shading, as the uh, engine processes your LODs, when it starts to compute them, you can give a higher level of importance to each of those settings. So for example, you know, if I really want my silhouette to hold shape um, as it's reducing, i.e., you know, I don't want to have just one edge kind of, you know, if it kind of encaves on itself, uh, you can set this to a higher priority. Um, so what the engine is going to do as it's processing all that information to create those LODs, it will say, hey, this is more important, so I need to make sure I, I keep this. Um, and what you may see as a result is you may see your triangle count go up a little bit higher, or you may see the engine kind of adjust where it's, um, it's placing emphasis and importance on other things to maintain um, th that the higher importance that you set. Um, so that, I mean, that in a, in a nutshell is the basic LOD setting. So, you know, if we were to go back in and instead of Deco, we were to change to like level architecture, Vista or foliage, um, each of those settings would have in it um, different settings for the reduction and computation settings. Again, we can see all of those things listed out um, as we go through. Again, those are all rules that were set in this LOD group. Okay, so now that we at least understand a little bit what's happening behind the scenes with these groups how do we create our own and why would we want to create our own so let's step to uh let's step into that next
One thing that I want to cover first before we dive into kind of creating our own custom LOD settings on import is the, um, is the notion of where this file is located. Now, whenever you're, you're building projects with Unreal, you have two means by which um, you can use the engine. There's the marketplace version, which you can download from the Epic Launcher, which installs and you can create projects uh, through that. And there's also building from source, which allows you to download the engine from GitHub, compile it yourself and have it running. Um, this isn't really about which is better than the other. However, one thing to note is that where this file is located, where you create your custom LOD groups is the same. Um, and that's gonna be located in your actual engine folder under engine config and then there's going to be an any file in there called base engine um, now in this situation the the example project that we're using here was built from the marketplace so my project is located in one folder and my engine is located elsewhere so i want to navigate to this config folder in my engine uh, folder directory as opposed to my project that's where this is going to be located so uh, with that, again, we're looking for the base engine.any file. Um, in particular, we're looking for the section that says static mesh LOD settings. Um, so that's what I have up. This is that engine, uh, that any file. Um, so let's go ahead and start kind of uh, uh, tweaking this a little bit. So off the bat, we can see that our LOD groups um, with the engine, these are all of the ones that uh, we saw from our dropdown, right? Level architecture, small prop, large prop, deco, vista, foliage, and high detail. Uh, so this is perfect. So we know we're in the right space. We know we're looking for the things that we need. Um, so so in here, we can kind of see some of the, the settings that have already been generated ahead of time. So uh, for this situation, I'm just going to copy one of these lines. So I'm going to take the, the level architecture. I'm going to do a return line. And let's just call it, um, we'll call it test LOD group is what we're going to have in there. Okay. So I, I will tell you this, that I don't know necessarily where to find all the variables, if all the variables are exposed that we see in the engine, right? We talked about silhouette, texturing, shading, um, you know, all of these things. I, I have not yet been able to find where these variables are located. If you guys know, absolutely post in the comment, share it with the rest of the world so we know. Um, however, uh, we can kind of deduce some of uh, some of those settings from the actual any file itself and then possibly even from the engine. Um, so what I would say is at the start, we can kind of just look at it um, from what's already in the any file and then hopefully the documentation will be updated later to show kind of the the additional uh, variables that we can um, inject in here. However, for this one, um, I think for this example, this will give you all the information you need to get started with. And of course, we can adjust later. Okay, so we've created this new test LOD group. And let's go in here and let's just say that we want to do seven LODs. I know, kind of an extreme number, but see what happens. All right, so light map resolution. So if we look back under here, under our general settings, we can see what our light map resolution comes in here. So we know we're targeting that. Um, without covering too much, you guys should uh, hopefully know a little bit about what light map resolution is. Um, but, you know, we can set it here. We can choose to delete it. In this case, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I don't want um, I don't want that variable. Let's just make sure. Yep, okay. So we don't have a space in between the comma. Very important to know. Okay, so we've got minimum number of LODs, 7. LOD percentage triangle. Okay, so if you remember, a little bit earlier we talked about that this was going to go off of our base. So the, the way that the engine is processing is 50% reduction for each. Yeah, I'm going to change this. So let's get a calculator out real fast and find out. Um, if we did 100 divided by 7, we're looking at about 14% reduction. So in this situation, instead of doing a 50% reduction, I'm going to do, let's say, 15%. Okay, so each LOD is going to be reducing by 15, 15. So it'll be 15% from the base, 30, 45, 60, so on and so forth. Pixel error, again, we can kind of see here what's that. We may or may not need it. We'll keep it in there for now. Silhouette importance. Okay, so here's where we're starting to see some of these variables that are actually... Um, associating with with these reduction settings but this kind of goes back to what I was saying I'm not entirely sure all of the settings and what the variables are because in the engine we see silhouette but in our any file we see silhouette important so we'll keep that um, let's see so if our silhouette importance is four we'll jump back here and see what that associates with so we've got 
off, lowest, low, normal, high, and highest. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to assume the highest level we can have is five. So you know what? Let's put it down at five. We'll see what it is. And the name lock text is how this is going to um, appear. So we're going to change this to, uh, we'll change it to our test LOD group here. And then we'll make sure that it says, instead of LOD, we'll take our group away. And then uh, level architecture, this is what I believe our drop down is going to state. So we'll say test LOD group. Yeah, we'll just make sure so we can see where this pops up. Okay. So that's it. We could add more variables. We could take away more variables, but that's all that we need. So we'll save the any file. Um, and I believe for these settings to take place, we're going to need to restart the engine. So uh, let's restart the engine, come back, and we'll see if we get our test LOD group. Now that we're back in the engine, I've gone ahead and just duplicated our FBX that we have for this rock. So let's go ahead and import it and see if we get that test group. Okay, so under here, there it is, test LOD group. Perfect. Click it um, and let's import. And then let's kind of see what's happened. So we'll open this guy up and there we go. Um, so immediately we can see we now have our seven LODs and each one. So we'll go through, let's see LOD zero, LOD one, ah, percentage triangle, 15%. Um, so I did my math wrong, um, but I think this is a great example. So that's going to be our full percentage, not the reduction from zero. So in the situation, we probably didn't want to go 15. We wanted to go, um, I believe 75. So you see that each one is dramatically reducing it down to nothing. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's, that's the way that you can go in and, you know, create your own custom LOD groups. Um, so kind of wrapping up this video to explain, um, I guess as a whole, why would you want to do this? Um, the biggest reason for that is in your production environment, let's say that you know, you're know you working with a handful of artists, could be two, could be 200. Um, and as you're importing these assets into the engine, you don't particularly want to keep creating um, you know all of these LODs by hand. Um, this is where it's great to set your own custom groups. Um, you can take this base any file if you're working with a dev team and let's say that you guys are all working out of a marketplace build, you can share this base engine any file with them. Just tell them, hey, go ahead and just copy this over and use this existing one. If you're working from source, obviously you have access to this um, and your team will probably be sharing that, that same uh, file no matter what. Uh, but just understand that th this is where you create your custom LEDs is in your base engine any file. And from there, when you import your assets now, you can go ahead and choose these custom LODs with all the settings um, that you want. So again, very uh, you know simple process, but very powerful when it comes to saving you a lot of time in production and also kind of standardizing your asset import um, uh, pipeline. So hope this helped. Um, again, if you guys have uh, suggestions for future videos, absolutely put them down in the comments um, and I'll see what I can do to make those um, into the next video. So thanks for watching, hope this helped.